So something called projector operator, which is uh, very important, right? So what is a projector operator? Again, it's the inner product. You find that I keep telling you something very basic, but this is a tool useful. Projector operator is something like this. It's the output, outer product of a vector. Okay, what does it do? What does it do? It project and vector to V. Okay. So it basically it finds the overlap. with v okay so if you have vector you try to project it to uh another vector then we can use this projection operator okay why right so from completeness that we just discussed We just discussed, right? We have if I V I V I. I think let me call this I so you won't get confused because I use different notation in my note, right? I have a vector which is V. If I want to find a component of V, a component of V I in V, right? I have a 3D vector. I want to find out how much X hat it has. You've done that already in your homework, but many of you probably won't use projection operator because I did not teach you. Otherwise, it's very easy to find how much component it has, right? Here I use the comp uh, comp uh, projection operator. I, sorry, let me also call this PI. It will be easier, right? So I apply this projection operator to my, the, my original operator. If it's VI, VI. And then due to completeness, I have equal to i equals zero. This one becomes tricky. J, let me call it i, j equals zero to n minus one, alpha j times v j, right? Because of the completeness. This whole thing is just v. Okay, if I apply this to it, what do you get? I can just apply the VI into it, then I got IJ, I mean alpha J, VI, VJ, right? What is this one again? VJ inner product VI, VI inner product VJ. Connect the other, delta IJ, right? Again, it is zero everywhere, except when I equal to J. So this one give me alpha J, alpha I, right? When I equal to J times V I, right? Because this whole thing is just alpha I. So isn't that it, by applying the projection operator, let me even don't write this from compare. I just want to write one PI operate to V equals to this. But applying the projection operator, I get exactly the component I want. You tell me how much component I, how much VI I have, right? For this any vector. Is this okay? Let's look at an example, right? That may be easier. For example, yeah. Alpha J with some J from zero to N minus one. So when I equal to J, then it is one. Otherwise, they are all zero. Yeah. So yeah, the only left over is alpha i. Thank you. Thank you. 
for example, let's say V equals to alpha beta, right? This is arbitrary matrix, right? I want to find what is the, com uh, I, I can say this is also equal to alpha times zero plus beta times one, I get very used to this. I have alpha components of the first vector, beta component of the second vector. So how much component, if you, how much component I have in the zero direction, in the zero, I mean the zero vector, based on this equation, how much component I have? Alpha time, yeah, alpha, and then in vector is alpha zero, right? This term is the component I have, right? It's just nice thing, I write the English book, I'm asking how much component I have for A, right? What you can do is keep counting, right? And you do see that I have so many A, right? But I can use projection operator also, right? If I say, how do I do it? I will construct a projection operator P0 equal to this one, okay? And then I apply P0 into V. Right? A lot of math, but let's play with that. Zero, zero operates on alpha zero plus beta one. Okay, let you go back to try the matrix form. Here I only try this uh, derived form. Distribution law, zero, zero, alpha zero plus zero, zero, beta one. What is alpha and beta? Is it a matrix number or a vector? Alpha, beta, number, right? It's a number, right? Okay, sorry, I keep ignoring those uh, online. Alpha is a number, right? Because it's the coefficient. So I can take it out. This equal to alpha zero, zero, zero plus Beta zero, zero one. What is zero in the product zero? One, because it's in the product to itself. What is zero in the product one? Huh? Orthoromal, because we are talking about this sigma z basis, right? So we, it is orthoromal. So what, what will it be? Zero. Right, awful long. So what is this answer? Alpha zero. Isn't that that is exactly the same as what you told me earlier? The amount of components of V in the zero is alpha zero. This is the vector. It's just like the vector I have two X hat. But using projection work operator, I also get two X hat. Okay. Now why I need this? This is so easy to see. But if you want to try to apply, right, projection operator can be constructor for law for other vector for any other vector also. It doesn't have to be basis. So basically you say you have this vector in the space. I ask you, how much does it project to this corner? This is not X hat, Y hat, Z hat. You just do this and then you will get it. Yeah. I don't know, I'm trying to think that the reason I, uh, yeah, you need to simpl simplify it, but the reason we learn projection operator is now we can use it in arbitrary uh, projection, not just to the basis, right? Basis is easy, you just find the component, right? Any questions? Okay, what do you think? Let me look at, hmm? yes, very good. Zero operator, yes. Thank you, Dilon. Okay, now why projection operation of, uh, uh, operator is useful? Then it means 
if you project how much I have in that vector, in, in particular for basis, if I project to basis, it ba I basically can find out what are the uh, what are the probability of finding that basis. Okay, so I can tell you the probability of finding it in the i basis. I call it p. This time, this is probability not vector of finding i is equals to the any vector v on the projection matrix right, this is the pro it is uh Confusing, right? But I deliberately make it confusing. Right? This is the projection operator, which is a matrix. Probability is just a number. You just squeeze them together, then you will see that this is the probability. Why is that? Let's prove it. What is a projection operator? It is for, for this, uh, if we project to the uh, basis, right? I just told you, this is just VI, VI, the I state. Do you agree with this, everyone? It's just, just the outer, outer products, right? So again, ask yourself, what are these symbols? This is the outer product, so it is the matrix. This is the cat, so it's the vector. This is the bra, so it's the vector. Right, vector row row vector times matrix times column vector give you a number, which is the probability. So let's see this is if this is correct. Now I can group them becomes v operate on v one, v i. Sorry, I mean v i. Okay, but what is this? We learned that before. How is this term related to this term? This term, V inner product V i, is it a number or scalar? I told you it's inner product, right? Scalar, right? It's a bra times cat, so it's a scalar. So if I swap them, what do I get? Scalar, yes. Do you remember? Complex conjugate is a number. Do the complex conjugate. Correct, you know. Complex conjugate, right? But we just say what is V i in the product with V? Let's look back. I think you forgot. What is the V i? Not maybe. Uh, or just look at this. What's V i in the product of V? It's just alpha i, right? Or earlier we actually have this here. We this is J, right? A lot V i, but it's the same. J in the product of V is alpha J. Right? You take the basis, project it or take the vector project it to the basis it gives you the coefficient makes sense right so this is just alpha i star alpha i and do you remember this is just alpha i squared which is is just the probability of finding the state in vi when you do the measurement Okay, so this equation I gave you, right? You need to memorize it. The probability of finding something. Now you don't need to make it too complicated. Construct a projection operator. Okay, I want to know what's the probability of finding the state in a certain state. I just construct a uh, projection operator. Is this okay? What's going on?
Okay, so uh, I wasted half pages. I don't need so much pages. Now, you know how to do that. Then let's go back to what we learned earlier. I say you guys will be very con were, was very, were very confused, right? Now I hope that you understand what is matrix. Copenhagen interpretation or born rule, right? You may just memorize these two names. At least you ring the bell in the future when you see them. They say, what is quantum mechanics? If an observable, observable means something we can measure. So the eigenvalue has to be real, right? Correspond to a self-adjoint operator A. What is the meaning of self-adjoint again? A dagger equal to A, which is also called her mission. Okay, so you have every observable corresponds to a Hermitian operator. Okay, they might have a discrete spectrum. Basically, is saying that they have lambda i, lambda zero, all the way to lambda n minus one eigenvalue. Okay, and if you perform a measurement on a state at any state the result is that you will get one of the eigenvalue of a as the output for example if this is sigma c i get plus minus one this is the eigenvalue of sigma c and what is the probability of getting that you already know it's just a times a star right but it tell you that okay you can use the projection operator that uh, to form this, and then you just find this uh, sandwich bracket notation that you give you the number. The important thing said here is it project it to the corresponding what we call the eigenspace, right? So now you know what is self adjoint matrix. It is Hermitian matrix, right? It is a dagger equal to a, right? Uh, you know how to find the eigenvector and eigenvalue value, why they're important? Because that is what you measure. If you measure it, you need to know the eigenvalue, right? And also bracket notation. Okay, any questions? With that, I want to give you some example, uh, which is pretty important. I think we need to make it very clear how you use the projection operator, right? Let's take example. For example, if I have psi equals to one square root three, the first state, I call it one. I just have three state minus i square root three, two plus i square root three, three. How many, what is the dimension of this vector? Three dimension is 3D. Okay. This is first thing. I, 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 or maybe you say, oh, maybe it has a zero uh, component of zero, but here, no, I start with one. Okay. Okay. Assume I cannot say that you will get confused. This is normalized. You try to find the sum of the coefficient, it's equal to one. Right. Why? 1 over square root 3 square plus i over square root 3 square plus 1 over square root 3 square equals to 1 is normalized. Okay, so I my question to you is that what is the probability of finding state 1 or state 2 or? So how do we do that, right? You, by inspection, you can say that, well, for one, it's easy. It's just one square root three square equal to one over three. I have 33.3333% to find it in state one, right? Is this okay? Yes, I missed the square. Thank you. One over three. Subtract problem of three from one probability of three from one. Uh, okay. What is the probability of getting two? Find the absolute value, i over square root three, by square equal one over three. Right? So the total probability is what? Two over three. 
So I have two over three probability that I will find it either in one state or second state when I do the measurement. Okay, this is method one. Bring what? Okay, I'm I'm not good enough. I should just put negative i, but negative one square equal to one. Yeah, this is a good point, right? Your the whole coefficient need to need to get square. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's why this is not. I say magnitude, right? So this is a good point. It is equal to if you try to do it, it should be negative i square root three star times negative i square root three, and now you will get it, right? I times i equal to negative one, and so on. Yeah. So it always the real equation is a star times a. Okay, or you find the magnitude. So good point. Now, okay, some question. Is one foot for cat one or cat two? Is two foot? Not n, okay. We're asking the probability. The probability of finding state one is one foot. The probability of finding cat two is one foot. The probability of finding one or two, right? It can come out as one or come out as two. Then it's two foot. What's the probability of finding one and two at the same time? Zero, because they're all orthogonal, right? It's just like the girl, either yes or no to me, cannot be at the same time because they're all is, is that okay? I forgot who asked. Yeah, just let me know if this is not clear. Now, I can use the projection of operator, right? But how do I construct the projection operator? How do I construct? Projection operator is constructed, is saying that what is the probability of projecting to one or projecting to two? So I should actually split it as two problems. Right, Pro probability for one, I should have the projection operator equals to one, one. And then probability for two, I should have the projection operator equal to two, two. Okay. It is wrong to say that I try to construct a projection operator one or two as one, one plus two, two. This is wrong. Because here you actually try to project into another vector, which is one. No, 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 no. Sorry. This is still the same, right? Because you add them together. <laughs> what I'm trying to say, yes, yes. Multiply, good. One plus two times one plus, not minus. Yeah, okay. one plus two, right? Because this one, is projecting to vector one plus two. Okay, you are asking the probability of projecting into that vector. Okay, yeah. stays what? It's just a new vector. It's a new vector, exactly. And you will find out that what I got, right? It is different. You will get one over. And, and, and you may even think that I let me normalize it, right? Let me maybe you say I get the wrong result because I did not normalize. So let me still normalize it. Okay, try it, try it yourself. Because of time, I don't do it. You try to squeeze it, right? Put it together. You get the answer is one third for all. 
you have one third of probability projecting into this vector, right? It does not answer our original question. Is this okay? So be careful of this when you do the projection operation. You keep asking you what I'm trying to do. I want to project into the state. And the original question is asking you either project to X or Y, but you don't construct a vector between X and Y and then say that what's the probability project to that vector. Okay, 